Hey, Fi fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps, and I'm joined now with the one and only Gabriel Rosado. Gabe, uh, first of all, thank you for doing the interview and sitting down with me. But secondly, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just finished that wild card right now. Mm -hmm. um, got a good workout in. Uh, it was my first day of sparring yesterday. So I'm just feeling good, mm -hmm. for sure. So we all know that there has been words exchanged between you and Danny Jacobs. Yeah. The news finally got announced. You guys are going to be fighting on November the 27th. He so, said, I he. I talked my way into it, huh? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what he said. He said you talked your way into the fight. So congratulations yeah, on that yeah. one. First, I want to ask you, based off of just the back and forth trash yeah. talk the two of you guys have had, do you do you really not like him? I mean, it, it's just I just feel like you know, uh, lack of respect. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, he's reached a certain level and he just kind of walks around with his chin high, like, you know, he's hot shot. You know what I mean? So, you know, I just kind of want to shut him up. Mm. I mean, I'm not feeling him. You know, this is a guy that we've known each other for a minute. Not, not on a personal level, but we've seen each other come up. On the know, boxing scene, 18, yeah. 19 mm -hmm. years old, right? So, you know, I just feel like he's feeling himself. So, mm. you know, it's just... Uh, We've had our words. He says some things I don't like. I've said I've said a few things he don't like. So it's like, all right, well, let's settle it. When he mentioned your record, he basically insinuated that because you've had so many losses that you like it almost undermined everything that you've done and worked hard for. How did you feel about that? Well, just you gotta look at the you gotta look at the names, right? So if mm -hmm. you look at his if you look at the names, his resume coming up, you know who who did he fight? Well, no, no. I mean, the only the only names he has on his resume is Mora, who's already past his prime. Who heard him? And then you got Canelo and 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 Golovkin, mm -hmm. right? But other than that, you know, I was I've been fighting Golovkin, you know. Um, let me see, Golovkin, uh, Peter Quillen, Lemieux, Lemieux the Angulo. Charlos, mm -hmm. uh, Angulo when mm -hmm. Angulo was in his prime, you know. So. I've been, you know, my route's been a little different, you know. I started late, so it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was that fighter where a manager took me in and was grooming me to become a world champ. It was just throw, throwing me to the wolves mm -hmm. right off the rip. So I take pride in my career because, you know, we're talking about I'm about to be 15 years, years in as a pro. I'm still relevant. The fans still love me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm really in this right now, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So... You know, this is a fight where I may be the underdog, but, you know, my chances of winning this fight are really good. Mm -hmm. You once said that you felt like you never had the support from promoters, from networks, from anybody. Really, you've done it all independently. Do you still feel that way? Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's, my, it's my route. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's how it's supposed to play out for me. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone could not everyone could take this route. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys, if... if um, a lot of guys would just be irrelevant. I think if if, if you gave um, Jacobs the the path that I've that I've walked, I don't even think we would hear about Jacobs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think everybody has their own their own way, and you know the fans recognize that. You know I think boxing is a fan base that comes from blue, blue collar fans, right? Mm -hmm. So they see a blue collar fighter, so I think that's why they root for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm good with how it is. You know I've already you know, establish my fan base, so I don't need the promoters mm -hmm. or the network. Let's talk a bit about your journey, because you have done everything on your own. You can actually say that. Yeah. Not everyone can say that. Yeah. And look, like you said, you are relevant. You are still finding the top-tier fighters. So let's talk, or let's take a trip down memory lane and what that was like for you. Yeah. Um, what did you do for work? when you were trying to, like, pay the bills in between, you know, trying to become a, a world-class fighter? Yeah, well, like, the first the first eight years as a professional, I've always held a job, whether it was work, working for the water main company, putting water mains on the ground, doing 10-hour shifts, to have to train for Angulo and Fernando Guerrero, you know, top prospect, undefeated dudes, you know, um, and then uh, working at Home Depot graveyard shift and, you know, $10 an hour, you know, where I finally got on NBC and I got on the roll and I, I pretty much was knocking everybody out at that time where I ranked number one at 54. Mm -hmm. So I was just doing it off the muscle, like real life Rocky, mm -hmm. right? And, um, 
you know, I would I would come in as the opponent and then I would just shock I would just shock them and just, you know, come out with a knockout win, you know. So, you know, that's just how it been. So, you know, now that I put myself in a platform where I'm able to, you know, just do this 24-7, you know, I'm just really dedicating myself to really winning this fight because I know the next step is a world title, whether that's, you know, uh, Smith or or Saunders, you have um, Canelo, mm -hmm. and, you know, you have Plant, you have Benavides, you, you know, the the 60 the 68 pound division is loaded, yeah, and nobody is. really is a kingpin of division, because mm -hmm. really, the best haven't fought the best in the division, so no one could really say I'm the, I'm, I'm the kingpin of the mm -hmm. division, you know what I mean? It's like, it's up for grabs, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm excited about it. Fighters often get caught up in getting comfortable. Yeah. Uh, whereas your journey, you've yeah. always been uncomfortable. Yeah. But now that you've been able to, for the past seven or so years, be able to support yourself solely off of boxing, yeah. have you always sort of reeled yourself in when you had moments of maybe you felt like, mm, maybe I don't have to go to the gym right now yeah. or whatever, well, you know? You know, you know I, I, I venture into other things, you know, real estate and, mm -hmm. and um, oh, I, own, I own my own gym in downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got into the Hollywood, you know, with the films and all. So I've done a few other things where, honestly, you know, if I really don't want to do this, I don't have to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm still passionate about it, and it's still my number one priority because I haven't won the world title mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. So, like, I still need that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what keeps me going. And, you know, at this point, of course, we fight for money and all that, but at this point, it's really not that's not the main thing, it's more about legacy. Mm. Like, yo, become a world champion, I think that's, that's you know, that's just a Hollywood film right there. That's, yeah, that's yeah, crazy, yeah. right? Well, world title or not, who would be the, I guess, the peak for you? If you got an opportunity to fight them, and let's say, win or lose, you got that opportunity, who would that person be? You know, I think this is a pretty big fight with Jacobs. Mm -hmm. You know, Jacobs is a former world champion. You know, he's been in there with Golovkin and, and Canelo. He came up short, but, you know, he was in those fights. You know, I think uh, a win against um, Jacobs speaks volumes. You know what I mean? So, you know, obviously the big the big fight in the 68 division is Canelo. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, not, I'm not... He's in everybody's division right now, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> So it's like, you know, it's not really, I would never look past, you know, um, Jacobs because, you know, I've made that mistake in the past where you kind of think ahead and you, you, you lose track on what's ahead of you. But obviously I think, you know, um, you've always had a great rivalry when it comes to Mexican and a Puerto Rican fighter, mm -hmm. right? You know, so I think that would be a great fight, mm -hmm. you know, if it was to happen, but... You know, it's not it's not a fight that I need to be satisfied. You know, I'm honestly I'm good with just doing what I got to do and, and knocking out Jacobs on the 27th mm -hmm. and really coming up with with a, with a big win. You said you've made the mistake in the past of overlooking an opponent. Yeah. Uh, Danny Jacobs has said that he's not overlooking you, yeah. but he's got his eyes set on Jamal Jamal Charlo. Yeah. What did you think of that? I mean, he he he, he can say whatever he want. You know. I think I think he knows what he's in for. I know he's in. He knows he's in for a tough fight, you mm -hmm. know. But um, you know, honestly, if I looked at my last couple of fights, I wouldn't be too impressed. You know, what I mean, I wouldn't say that my last couple of fights was me really being a hundred percent mentally there. I think the most important thing is like to be mentally in a fight, mm -hmm. you know. And the physical part is easy, you know. The putting in the miles, the the sparring, and all that shit. That's that's muscle memory, but it's really putting yourself, your mindset into it, right? So I think, um, I think that's just what I, I think with me having a great team right now in, in Freddie Roach, mm -hmm. who's a trainer, world class, who, you know, he's not animated, he ain't yelling, he ain't doing all that extra shit, but you know, Freddie will tell you something in the most calmest way, but is, is, is real what he says, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I take, and I have great respect for Freddie Roach, so, I think, you know, having him in my corner for the second time, you know, first time we worked together, it wasn't televised because of the riot that broke out in the, in the um, Chavez and uh, Jacobs fight. Mm -hmm. we, the, 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 this, the arena got evacuated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, I fought in the, 
in, in, in front of an empty arena. So it's like, oh. it kind of prepared me for what's ahead <laughs> anyway, right? So it's like, it's God's plan the way I see it. Like God was like, I got something for you. You don't know, trust me, you'll see why. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just love having Freddie in my corner. And I think, I think mentally that just puts me in a space where like, I think people are definitely going to see the best of me. What's the most real thing Freddie's ever said to you? What, I mean, it could be anything, but what, what's been something that he might have said where you're like, damn, like nobody's ever said that to me before? You know, it's not necessarily that he says, it's not necessarily like, you know, things of that nature, like, you know, it's more like if we're sparring, he'll let me know what my opponent is doing that I won't catch on. But he'll tell me, and being that I'm a veteran, I know exactly what he's saying. Like, he doesn't have to get fooled into detail. Mm -hmm. He'll just say something about, I don't want to get too specific because, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give our game plan away, but he'll, he'll say some shit and I'll go, mmm, light bulb, got you. And then yeah. like the next round, the guy, the guy makes the mistake and I pull the trigger and it's yeah. boom, we get it. And it's like, man, that's, I love that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's pretty much like just him understanding that I'm a vet and he mm -hmm. could just tell me something simple mm -hmm. and I pick it up. Because, you know, I know Freddie since 2011 because I, I, when I was fighting on NBC, he was the commentator. Mm -hmm. So Freddie saw my rise at 154 when I ranked number one. Mm -hmm. And I would do my camps at Wildcard. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, me and Freddie, we, we, we go back. You've been through a lot of wars. What's been the most memorable fight for you? The most memorable fight? You know, yeah, I've been in, I've been in tough fights, you know. You know, I think the one that stands out, obviously, is the Golovkin fight. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a fight that I didn't have to take. Moved up from 54. I had my mandatory, which was K-9 mm -hmm. for the world title. And, you know, I just kind of wanted this there to be great and just kind of like, all right, no one wants to fight Golovkin, I'll fight him, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that, you know, the, the atmosphere was crazy that day. Um, came up short, you know, but just being being on that world class stage at, at Madison Square Garden it was dope, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But um, you know, even Cowboy Stadium, I fought in Cowboy Stadium, it was crazy. Probably the biggest arena I've ever mm -hmm. fought in. But yeah, I've had a lot of memorables. You know, I fought it everywhere. Madison Square Garden, MGM, Mandalay Bay, Liverpool, like mm -hmm. man, where haven't I fought? Yeah. <laughs> so like I've had a pretty crazy career. Yeah. All right, what's been the best opponent with trash talk? That you've uh, that you've had. I think they all suck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I don't, I don't think honestly I think I'm too slick for all of them. I mean, Jacobs, I, I call him cornball. Cause y'all yeah y'all had an exchange. He's super corny. Y'all had an exchange in Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, you know. And yeah, I called. I told him I said you're you're, so, you're corny, dude. Like I have nothing against his his ability, his skills. I just think he's corny, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think he's boring. And uh, other than that, man, there's really no one that I think, you know, that has ever said some slick shit. I'm like, oh, that was nice. I <laughs> 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 mean, so nah, not really. Yeah. All right, so I, I want to talk to you a bit about the 168 division. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a few names, or I'm going to mention a few names and ask you to tell me what you think of them. All right. Yeah. So we, you obviously mentioned Callum Smith. Yeah. No, Smith, tall, tall guy, has, you know, a, a, a reach advantage. Um, you know, I think, I think with him is he hasn't been in there with, you know, a top world-class veteran. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe he lacks a bit of experience, mm -hmm. but... You know, he makes up for it just in, in his size. He's probably the biggest 68-pounder, you know what I mean? But um, but I think he's a pretty solid dude. I'm interested mm -hmm. to see what he, what he would look like against a, a top world-class guy. Mm -hmm. um, Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders. I think Billy is, I think he's skillful, a little inconsistent as far as, you know, in his performance, you know what I'm saying? You know, when he's on his AEM, I think he's one of the slickest guys in the division. But, you know, sometimes he slacks off, probably gets a little big in weight. And it shows. Uh, I've seen it in, in the fight at Staples Center mm -hmm. where they were actually giving me that fight. Um, it didn't work out for whatever reason. But um, I just think with him, it's just inconsistency. But he, he definitely has skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. Caleb Plant. 
Uh, Plant is definitely a fighter that has good skills, has a good attitude, but once again, I would put him into the category with uh, Smith where he ain't been tested. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of guys look great, but, you know, it's, it's different when you're in there with a guy that has experience and is playing chess with you at a high level because then it's probably something you'll see for the first time where you never know how a guy's going to react. So mm -hmm. is he going to react on a positive way or is he going to, like, break down a bit? So, you know, I think he got all the skills, but it's just a matter of, like, let's see what he what it takes, what he got when he's uh, facing the top guy. Mm -hmm. Well, former WBC uh, super middleweight Benavides. David Benavidez, yeah. Benavidez, I would put him a little bit like Billy Joe, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Skillful, powerful. I used to spar him back in Phoenix when he was a kid, like when he was really? like 17. <laughs> but uh, Benavidez, like, decent kid, man. I like him. But once again, you know, inconsistency, you know, mm -hmm. just not making the weight and things like that, you know. Um, so other than that, man, that's the only, uh, that's the only flaw he would have mm -hmm. is just not being consistent, which is a big flaw. But, you know what I mean, he just got to nip that. Of the ones that we just talked about, if you had to – uh, give the top three, who would they be? You forgot Canelo. Oh, well, well yeah. to be honest with you, Canelo, well, yeah, we'll talk about Canelo, but Canelo's all over the place. He's in every division. He's, <laughs> he's 175. He's one. I think, I think he's yeah. definitely going to stay at 68 because, yeah. I, you know, to go from 75 to drop back down to 60, I don't see that happening. Well, we know that he might be fighting Avni Yildirim. I'm not quite sure, okay. you know, for the vacant WBC super middleweight title. Okay, okay. So, like, Canelo, you know, skillful, good defense. Um, you know, I think with him, I think the only thing with Canelo is just, you know, he won't stay, he's not an active fighter throughout the entire round. He fights the rounds in spurts. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, but I would say, you know, experience-wise, you know, I would put him on the top mm -hmm. of the list when it comes to the 68 uh, division. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. As far as experience and understanding a situation and, you know, being able to adjust, mm -hmm. I would give him the upper hand. So if you had to do the top three, who would they be? The top the top three of the guys I just named? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? I would put, um, I mean, I would put, uh, I would put probably Canelo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then I would put, uh, Probably put Smith, mm -hmm. and then um, you know I would like to put Benavides, but you know just with the, the inconsistency, it's hard to rank them. So you know I put I put Saunders mm -hmm. uh, behind Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So of the. But I'm coming though. So once 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 I take care of business with Jacobs, you know what I mean I'm be right in that list with them. You're being a gentleman right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing about the I'm playing about the you know I'm being politically correct right now. So yeah. you know I got I got to take care of business, beat Jacobs, and then you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the fans, the fans that speak for me. Of the three that you just named, yeah. who's the easiest and who's the hardest for you to beat? You know what I'm saying? I don't, honestly, when you're fighting at this level, it's really no easy fight. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think at this level, it's just more of a challenge within yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, my challenge isn't Jacobs. My challenge is me. You know what I'm saying? My challenge is making sure I'm getting up. I got up at 4.30 in the morning today, right? It's just being consistent, doing that every day. When you, when this, you know, when that alarm rings, like fuck, you don't want to get out of the bed. You gotta do it though. Yeah. Right. You know, you might want to eat that burrito, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So really, yeah. you know, at this level, it's not. No one is. A, it's not really the, the fighters. The challenge is really you just staying disciplined and keeping that hunger that you had when you didn't have shit. Mm -hmm. So I look at it more like that, where I'm, I'm my challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like. Either either the either of those fights are equally as tough, but it just comes down to like, you know what I mean? Am I going to put the work in? Mm -hmm. You know, so like the way I see Jacobs is, I don't think Jacobs is the challenge. It's more me. It's like, am I going to get up? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Am I going to get up for it? Am I going? You know, when Freddie wants, when Freddie wants me to step it up in the eighth round of sparring, am I going to give him what he wants? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just me locking in mentally and just saying, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do what I got to do to get this win. Great answer. Um, lastly, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on Chavez Jr. saying that he'd like Triple G next. <laughs> you know, Chavez, man, look, Chavez, I'm cool with Chavez. You know what I'm saying? We, we did our last camp together or whatever, whatever. 
look, you know, he got his own wave. You know, he came up differently, so, you know, he has a, an edge. He has the Chavez name, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this is a guy that's been inconsistent his whole career, but look at look at what he did at the at, in Phoenix. It was sold out, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, the fans were disappointed from the outcome, but, you know, but... I mean, do I see that being a realistic fight? Nah, I mean, do I want to see it? Not at all. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not really, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for doing this. I swear to God, my arm was like, I don't know if you noticed, it started here and it was like that. No, 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 it's because, no, it's, no, 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 it's fine. It's because when you're, when you're apart, I, I feel weird. Because normally when I do an interview, I would just kind of go like this. Yeah. But then I'm like, this? <laughs> So it's like, I don't know if you saw, if you guys noticed, it's going to yeah, drop yeah, over time. Yeah, and I'm trying to bring it up and I'm shaking. So you got to Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it as always. You guys don't want to miss it. You got Gabriel Rosado versus Danny Jacobs, November the 27th, um, live on DAZN. For sure. All right, final words? No, I can't wait, man. Just tune in. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be, it's going to be an upset because I know I'm the underdog in it. And I accept that challenge, mm -hmm. but I can't wait to prove uh, the the media and, you know, everyone naysayers. wrong. The naysayers. Mm -hmm. right, for sure. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, Fight Fans. Hey, Fight Fans. It's Michelle Joy Phelps. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do so by clicking this icon right here or else.